hello here we are discussing about the determination of chemical oxygen demand of the given wastewater sample this is a uh, part b titration experiment so coming to the chemical oxygen demand here the aim of the experiment to is to determine the chemical oxygen demand of the given wastewater sample cod what is cod means uh, it's amount of the oxygen required to oxidize both the both organic and inorganic impurities present in water by using a strong chemical oxidizing agent like potassium dichromate and the unreacted dichromate is estimated by using standard KPA solution. You know like you should have seen uh, in the case of the uh, closed drains, so it will be imparting large amount of the bad smell that is due to the you know in water samples the impurities will be present both organic and inorganic impurities okay they will be taking some amount of time for decomposition and they surely they need oxidation oxygen for their oxidation okay in the case of closed drains what happens all the available oxygen it will be using once there is no more oxygen what happens there is no decomposition will be taking place so it will be uh, imparting a large amount of bad smells and you know determination of the cod is one of the very important factor because it is very important for the life of the aquatic animals which is present in water so cod is the amount of oxygen required for the complete chemical oxidation of organic and inorganic impurities present in a wastewater sample by using strong chemical oxidizing agent like a potassium dichromate fine here no what we do is a known volume of the wastewater sample is taken and with the known volume of potassium dichromate along with the silver sulphate and mercuric sulphate. Okay, wastewater contains organic impurities such as straight and aliphatic compounds, aromatic hydrocarbons, alcohols, acids, pyridine and other easily oxidizable impurities will be there, straight chain compounds, acetic acid etc. All these will be present in a wastewater and can be oxidized more effectively by the addition of a silver sulphate. Okay, here why are we using silver sulphate because silver will be acting as a catalyst in oxidizing some of the organic compounds which are difficult to oxidize. So when we use catalyst it will be oxidized easily and you know even in uh, water samples frequently chloride ions will be present. Okay, so they should not interfere in the experiment so to bind the chloride ions we will be adding here mercuric sulphate. When we add mercuric sulphate the chlorides present will be reacting with the mercury and will be forming mercury chloride. Okay, and the total amount of the COD of the given wastewater sample, uh, a blank titration is conducted with the same volume of the dichromate solution and without using the wastewater sample. Okay, this is about the theory of the experiment. Coming to the experimental part, we have to prepare first a standard solution, standard API solution. Okay, for our burette, we have to prepare a standard solution. Your standard solution used is a ferrous ammonium sulphate. Okay, wash all the apparatus cleanly with the distilled water. Bay the given FAS, ferrous ammonium sulphate crystals to a cleanly wash 250 ml volumetric flask. Important here, important. You are adding one test tube of a dilute H2SO4. Okay, please do remember after weighing the salt, you have to add H2SO4. If you add water, your experiment will go wrong. Okay, you are adding H2SO4. Okay, here only there is a clue for the why the question asked? Okay, the question asked will be why are you adding H2SO4? H2SO4 is added, I said you, before adding water you are adding. Okay, so what is the answer? To prevent the hydrolysis, to prevent the hydrolysis of ferrous sulphate into ferric sulphate, you are adding first H2SO4. Okay, I'll take the salt, add one test tube of H2SO4, then add water up to the mark. Okay. And mix the solution very well important you have to mix the standard solution very well for five minutes after mixing it for five minutes you have to fill it in the burette and you are calculating the normality of the solution okay coming to the experimental part you have to pipette out 25 ml of the given wastewater sample you also should pipette out 25 ml of the potassium dichromate remember here you don't know how much of the potassium dichromate is exactly required to oxidize you are adding bulk 25 ml okay you are adding 25 ml that's why to know what is the unreacted potassium dichromate you are doing blank titration okay you don't know exactly how much of potassium dichromate is required a known volume we are adding and the unreacted potassium dichromate we are calculating by doing a blank titration okay so first you have to pipette out wastewater 25 ml 25 ml of the potassium dichromate 
and we should add a one test tube of uh, dilute uh, H2SO4 containing silver sulphate and mercury sulphate. I told you the functions are uh, silver sulphate acts as a catalyst in oxidizing some of the organic compounds and mercury sulphate will be acting as a you know to bind the chloride ions. Frequently chlorides will be present in water. So mercury sulphate will be binding the chlorides as mercuric chloride. Okay. And then we have to add few drops of indicator. The indicator used here is ferroin whose chemical composition is ferrous 1, 10 phenanthrolene sulphate. Okay. And after adding the indicator, you have to titrate. Remember here one more important thing. You have to add the indicator equally to all the titrations. Okay. What and all I am telling the information here. You must remember. Otherwise, no, in this experiment, you will be getting. There are a lot of chances for getting error. Okay. So, you have to add the indicator equally to all the all the trials. You add 6 drops to all the trials. Okay. For each trial, add 6 drops only. Not less or not more. Okay. So, add the ferroin indicator. You will get a bluish green color. Okay. And titrate again a standard FAH is taken in the burette until the color changes from blue green to reddish brown. That is your end point. Okay. And you have to do, you know very well, 3 trials and record the values whatever you get. And coming to the blank titration. Okay, blank titration. What is blank titration means? Uh, blank titration is uh, similar to the back titration. What we did now, no, sample titration is called as a back titration. Back titration, it is similar to the back titration. Only the difference is we are not taking wastewater sample. That's all. Okay, only the sample will not be there here. Okay, blank titration is similar to the back titration in all the respects only. It does not contain wastewater. That is the sample. Okay, what is the remaining? We have to take potassium dichromate and sulfuric acid containing silver and mercury sulphate and we have to add indicator. Everything is same. We have to do one trial. Okay, that is called as a blank titration but nothing to worry. You don't have to do the blank titration. Only if it is asked in viva, you should know to answer what is blank titration. Blank titer value will be given to you by the examiners in your lab. Okay, you don't have to do blank titration. Blank titer value will be given to you. You have to do only the sample titration. Clear? And you are doing the three trials and you are recording the, okay? And uh, coming to the calculation part, uh, observation, you have to, you are weighing the salt rate, that bottle plus salt, uh, bottle plus salt weight W1, okay, and empty weight of the bottle is W2, W1 minus W2 gives the weight of the salt taken, and you have to calculate the normality of the FAS, uh, that is W into 4 by 392.14, you will get the normality of FAS, okay, like this you have to draw a table, final reading, initial reading and volume of FAS rundown, you have to note down, okay, so here, Whatever the amount of the FA is used, that we are taking it as a X. Okay. Let the volume of FA is consumed be X here. Okay. You just remember the last step of the calculation. Okay. What you have to do? 8 into Y minus X. What is Y? Y is the blank titer value that will be given to you. Okay. Given to you by the examiner. What is X? You have got the three readings. No. Here you have got the three readings. Any one you are taking as a X. Okay. So clear I think. Y is given to you, blank titer value. X is your burette reading, whatever you got. Any one value you have to take. And what is Z? Z you have calculated, no? The molarity in previous C. See here you have calculated. This is the Z. Okay. This is Z. Z normal. Okay. So, you know the burette reading, blank titer value and you know Z. Okay. So, you have to do this step. 8 into Y minus X into Z into 1000 by 25. If you do, you will be getting the amount of the, that is a COD of the wastewater sample. Okay. COD of the wastewater sample, you will be getting. Fine. So, like this, we will get the COD of the wastewater sample is equal to dash milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. You just remember the final step of the calculation. You have to write everything because calculation carries 8 marks. Final step important 8000 into y minus x into z by 25. Fine. And to see the demo you have to click this link. Okay. So demo is shown here. You can observe the demo. Thank you.